Alrighty, guys. Welcome, hello, to another beautiful, another wonderful Fusion Impact class. Good, we got some time before we officially get started. Chat, hang out. <clears throat> Good. Wait for a couple of you guys to get on in here. Because right now, I am talking to myself. No, you're not. You're talking to me. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> All right, now we have three people. We got a Tyler Paul. Hello. Welcome. Glad you could join us today. Good. We got a Quinn. Hello, hello. All right, I'm getting started in about two minutes here, guys. Uh, I got some fun stuff planned for you guys. Uh, what we're also going to do uh, in the time that we have left to kind of just chill, hang out, is I want to ask you guys one thing. Uh, because of quarantine and you know in quarantine time since we haven't been able to traverse the world as much uh, or be here on the mat you know, one thing that's been a positive all right so we be able to catch up on whatever um, or do something they haven't been able to have the time to do and then what's one thing once we kind of as start things start opening back up what's one thing that you're really excited to get back to whether it be training on the mat whether it be, you know, whatever it is, eating out, going to a movie, all that fun stuff. Good. We got Ryan Snizik. Hello, hello. We got Mrs. Cap. We got, ah! we got Brooklyn and uh, Mr. Rich there. And we got a Mrs. Horning. What's up? Mrs. Horning. Good. Uh, Mr. Lane, if you can grab my planner real quick it's on the table. I'm just going to banish him real quick. Okay. Well, you know what? But he'll be back. You know what? Good. So again, tell us one thing, um, again, because of quarantine, that's been a positive, uh, and then one thing that you're just really itching to get back to. Thank you, sir. Good. We got the Tejas family. Hello, Mrs. Horning. All right, we are doing well. Doing well. We got Mr. Milliman. Hello. All right, we got about 30 more, well, 25 more seconds left. And then we will get to going. Just gonna, you know, do this for your, for your safety. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Good. Yeah, family time. Definitely a positive. Awesome. Yeah, two, one, and a time. Alrighty. Let me get my timer going. <clears throat> Good, and let me angle this down. All righty, let's get started, guys. So, from here, face me. Can I bow? Academy tenants begin. I will demonstrate leadership, strength, commitment, knowledge, respect, sir. And can I bow? Shumbi, go ahead and get 10 awesome jumping jacks. There's so many comments, though. I'm going to read those. Good. Mr. Lane actually did get a haircut. I did! I did! I got a haircut! Thank you All guys right, for pause. noticing. Well, she didn't notice. That's why I'm pointing it out. <laughs> Alright, a lot more free time. Wow. Negative, not being able to see other humans. Be able to see everyone too. You miss a bunch of things. Alright, from there guys, Rich. hopefully we got our jumping jacks in. Net rotations. Good. And the other way. Arm circles forward, backward. Good. Arms across the body. Good. Up and down. Good. From there, reaching over the body, side to side, as you go. Boom. Bada. Bang and twist side to side, guys. Doing the twist. Good. Leg straight, reaching down low, side to side. Oh. Oh, this one gets me every time. Again, you can go down the middle, down to one side, down the other side, just trying to keep those legs as straight as you can. Good. You 
go. And from there, hands on the floor, hip side to side. Awesome. Good. So a couple of things that we're going to need today, guys. Uh, we're just going to need something or some objects that you can use to kind of make a uh, cone line or use as cones. Good. From there, going hop up. Because uh, we're going to be needing that today. Um, and we're also going to be needing a chair uh, at some point during class. So if you don't already have those somewhere nearby, I'll tell you when we need those and you can go get those. So what we're going to do for our warm-up drill, right, we're going to be working on some jumps. Okay. So first level, my feet are going to be together. We're going to go ahead and just get 10 jumps, hands up. Try to just jump, making or uh, breaking contact with the ground. Not going super high yet. And 10 of them. Go. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Got to be some comments here. Yay for haircuts. <laughs> Alrighty, so that was level 1. Level 2, alright. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have our feet out just a little bit wider. Alright, we're going to try and jump just a little bit higher, okay? What we're also doing is we're adding in some push-ups. So we're going to go ahead and get three jumps. Then we're going to drop down. We're going to get three push-ups. For this one, we're going to go for time for 30 seconds and go. Up here, just one, two, three. Dropping it down. One, two, three. Hop back up. One, two, three. Dropping it down. One, two, three. There we go. Eight more seconds. Trying to get one more round. Two, three. Here. One, two, three. Beautiful. Alrighty. Now what we're gonna do, last level here, is we are gonna work back to just straight jumps, but now I have to bring my knees up. Okay? So Feet as wide as my shoulders. We're gonna go ahead and get a total of five. So I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna bend my knees and bring my knees up. Go ahead and get five of those. Alright, so it's one, two, three, four, and five. Good. Lower this down. It's from there, have a seat, seat angle stretch. Good, so today what we're working on, guys, we are working on uh, some sparring stuff. So specifically footwork and kind of how to move uh, to best you know, defeat your uh, sparring partner. We're gonna choose back to toe stretch. Also gonna be working on a fancy kick today. Just because, why not? It's always fun, I like doing it, I haven't done it in a while. But it'll be fun to do. And some self-defense stuff. And we'll work out more at the end of class. Good, down for cobra stretch. Oh. Good. Again, I am super excited um, to be seeing you guys here pretty soon. June 1st, bringing back and get you guys back here on the mat. That'll be a lot of fun. And push my ear back up, cat back. Oh. Good. If you want a little bit of a forearm stretch as you do this, try and point your fingers towards you. There you go. Good. From there, down for the back bow, if they off the ground besides the knot of your belts. Trying to fly in the sky. Good. And roll around. Five bent leg, five straight leg back rollers. Go for it. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Leg straight. One. Thank you, Mrs. Cat. Two. Try and get all the way behind your head. Three, as best you can. Four. And a five. 
All right, then from there, Lake Cherry Jumbo, trying to grab those toes. for 10 more seconds. And from there, one leg straight, one leg back, switch on the straight leg. Oh, there we go. Again, try to pull your toes back towards you as you go. That way you get the best stretch possible. Again, leading your chest, not just your head. Whole body involved. The whole body. Good. And switch sides. Other side. Whew. Good. And reach, reach, reach. Good. Hopefully, this has become easier for you guys. Just a little bit maybe, hopefully. A little bit lower than you were before. Good, from there, one leg straight, other leg bent, spinal twist to that matching side. Good, and then say hello to whoever's behind you or whatever inanimate objects you want to give voices. Good, and some sides. Good. Awesome. From there, lay down on your back, pull knee, your chest, move over six seconds. Good. Again, also trying to make sure your toes are pulled back on this stretch, getting that knee as far back as you can get it. Good. This helps for our, uh, both for our side kick chambers and for our front kick chambers. Good. Awesome. From there, boom, legs out. Wide into V, as wide as they can go. And then from there, we're gonna get 10 side to side stretches, making sure I'm trying to keep my chest facing forward as much as I can, not leaning forward as much on this stretch. Okay, so hands here, 10 side to side stretches, go. One, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six. Good. Hopefully the legs are a little warmed up. A little bit wider, reaching down low, down the middle, down each side as far as you can get it. Good. Again, kind of use your hands to crawl forward. If you have somebody there to help you, they can kind of pull you a little bit, maybe. Good. Make sure one side, other side. Don't forget about them. They'll be pulling you down. Good. Back to the middle, back to this side. Oh, this side, I feel it. Good. Back another 10 more seconds. Good. And bottoms together, butterfly stretch. Whew. Nice and easy. Alrighty, from there, we're going to go ahead and hop up as best we can, shake our legs out. Good. Go ahead and get five more jumping jacks. Boom, bada, bang. Awesome. So first thing that we're going to do, all right, is we're going to work on our form while not working on our form. What that means is, is I'm not going to go through with you guys right now, you know, the sequence and everything like that. Again, there is a video on this, um, in this group that you can watch it or if you want to do that. Um, but what we're going to work on specifically today is our stances 
and kind of how we can improve or what's the mindset we should have when we are doing stances for our forms. So, the first stance, all right, which is the most important stance of this form, because uh, I think it's like 90% front stances, because we're doing front stances. So, I'm gonna angle this down just a little bit here. All right, so, when I'm in a front stance, there are two main thing, well, okay, three main things that I wanna make sure I'm doing. One, my feet are as wide as my shoulders, okay? A lot of times, mostly with younger kids, all right, when I'm doing a front stance, all right, they tend to keep their feet close together and then just here, okay? And my feet are on this very weird line and I'm not very balanced, all right? Or if I am balanced, this back heel is coming off the ground, all right? And that doesn't look very sharp, okay? I'm bending this leg, all right? So, feet as wide as my shoulders. That's the first thing. The second thing is my front leg is bent. So whichever leg I'm using, I extend it out and it's bent, okay? If you cannot see the kind of round part of your knee through your pant leg or, you know, whatever, while you're training, again, you're probably not bending your knee enough. This stance, if you hold it long enough, should feel uncomfortable, should, you know, make your legs a little sore, all right? If you're able to just kind of stand here for hours on end, you're probably not deep enough, all right? Or you've just mastered these stances and you've been, you know, holding front stances for all your life, but I don't think that's the case, all right? So I'm here. And the last thing is I want to keep this back leg straight plus our extra fourth thing, all right, my toes pointing forward, heel on the ground, all right? Again, my foot can kind of be off at an angle. That's okay. All right, I just want to try and work up as I practice to turn it all the way facing forward. And again, my heel is always on the ground though. Okay, so I'm here. So what I want you guys to do, all right, is again, just kind of work on that, all right? Is I'm going to be giving, uh, I'm going to set a timer, okay, for about a minute. And in that time, I want you to just hold a stance for like 10 seconds. All right, hold that stance on each side for 10 seconds. Keep switching back and forth. Okay, so let me get my timer here. Three, two, one, go. So again, just holding it for 10 seconds. And then switch out, shake your legs, move into your other stance. Again, just really making sure, taking the time to work out, iron those details out. Good. I'm gonna start now. Again, trying to keep your back up as straight as possible. You don't want to be leaning over. Again, if you want to keep your hands up, you can. Uh, if you just kind of want to have your hands hanging down here, that's fine for what we're doing. Good. I'm gonna switch sides here. Again, making sure chest facing forward. All right. If I'm angled off like this and I'm doing this, one, it doesn't look as sharp but if I have everything else roughly where it needs to be, then I'm going to end up hurting my knee because again, my knee bends this way, all right? But if I try and bend it going that way, all right, it's not going to work for me. So that was our front stance, okay? So front stance is, again, the primary stance for this form. Now we're going to work on Next is our sitting stance, okay? When I'm in a sitting stance, again, back up straight, I wanna get my belt as low to the ground as I can while still keeping my feet to the ground. All right, again, my heels. Let me scoot back. So again, if I go here like this, all right, my heels are not on the ground right now. All right, I can get as low as I can, I can almost touch the ground but I'm not you know, in a good sitting stance, all right? Because I'm way too low. I'm bringing up my heels. So I'm here, again, back up straight. I'm trying to just go as low as I can. Again, widen my stance as much as I need to. All right, and I'm here, all right? And sometimes we've done this in class. If you want to do this at home, you can, but just try and get like 
something small, all right, and flat, and put it on your legs, all right? If your that object is able to kind of stay balanced, that means you are low enough and your legs are bent enough. If I'm up here, all right, my legs are bent still, but I have this slope. So if I put anything right here, it's just gonna slide right off. So I wanna get it to where my legs are almost flat, all right? So for this one, we're gonna go for 30 seconds trying to just hold that stance. All right, again, if you're doing it correctly, it should feel uncomfortable. All right, let me get the timer going and go for it. So again, holding it for about 30 seconds. Good. This one, keep your hands up in guard. Don't let them rest on your uh, legs. Good, halfway there. Good. All right, 10 more seconds. Again, staying strong, guys, staying strong. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Shake those legs out. Good. All right, last thing that we're gonna do before we move on to some self-defense. I'm gonna, boop. Sorry, I just got a 3D view of my fingers there. All right, is now I wanna make sure my timing for my form is pretty good, okay? So what I mean by that is that when I do a kick, all right, I want to land the same time that I do my next hand technique, okay? So if I'm here, all right, and let's just do a couple of moves from section one. So, all right, so I'm here. I'm in my front stance. I take my back leg, it picks up, front kick, then from there, I'm landing. At the same time that I land, I wanna throw that elbow strike. It just makes the form look cleaner, it makes my moves look more powerful, especially if you can kinda of get that stomp in there. So, if I do it without my timing, all right, and I'm here, I just go front kick, good. That's not as sharp, okay? Another thing is I wanna land into my stance, all right? I don't wanna adjust after the fact. So, again, what that means is I'm in a pretty good stance here. I wanna kick and then land, I guess you can't see now, but I wanna land back in a really good stance. I don't wanna kick, land, and then get in that stance. All right, so again, not necessarily gonna work on that um, with me right now, but again, I would like you guys, next time you work on your form, to just, again, work on those small details. Make sure you kick, you land, that hand technique is almost immediately um, with it. Also making sure that you're not adjusting after you land your kicks, you're just right in that stance. Okay, self-defense time. Bada bing, bada boop. So, again, we have three different self-defense skills, brown belts and above. Uh, you only, uh, you're the only ones who have to do that third one for testing, but everyone else, again, still really good to know all these self-defenses regardless, because, you know, helps you in self-defense. So, first one, again, I'm in my fighting stance. Again, hands closed, hands open. Normally for self-defense, we like hands open. Again, you guys can kind of do whatever uh, you want to do right now but preferably again I want to have my hands open just to indicate like hey I'm not the one starting the fight but also my hands are just ready to grab uh, and stuff like that rather than this here okay so hands open hands closed I'm gonna step forward shield block my other arm comes up uppercut making sure there's a straight line between my elbow and my wrist okay so 30 seconds just going back and forth with that and go. So here, shield, uppercut. Again, using both sides. Boom, uppercut. Shield, uppercut. Adding nice loud yells if you want to. Good. Or quiet yells if, you know, you're gonna bother somebody, but you know, they should expect it by now. Good. Four more seconds. Good. 
and time. Good. All right, one quick thing just to kind of, you know, put in your brains before we move on. Again, as I do the shield block, all right, I'm bringing that arm back to where it started as I do this uppercut, all right? I don't want to completely drop it. I also don't want to just keep it there because, again, that's a little awkward. Plus, I'm still open if I you, uh, do the, everything else correctly. So I want to bring it back to guard. Okay, next one is going to be our parallel block. So, again, I'm here stepping forward whichever direction, you know, the hook punch is coming towards me. I'm stepping in, parallel block, then my closest arm to where their face would be, back fist, all right? So you're just stepping off left or right, and then towards the center, whichever arm's closest does that back fist. So let's go for 30 seconds. Here, so stepping off, back fist. Other side, one, two, good. Again, for this one, either palms uh, or hands open or hands closed. I like, again, hands open, because again, I can grab I can kind of saw. Uh, we've done that in class before. Boom, back fist. Boom, back fist. Three, two, one, time. So again, for that hand open, I can use that. Again, if I'm trying to twist their arm, if I do different things rather than what we're doing right now, again, from that same attack, I can kind of here, kind of saw the bicep area, get a little, you know, um, get those nerve endings there, kind of do, um, you know, kind of make it hurt a little bit for them, and then move on to another move or whatever. That's a great technique, again, if you have their entire arm or her arms closed, again, still works. So, next, all right, is our kind of fade away and then counter with a hook punch. So, here I'm ducking out of the way, all right? Again, I'm not just stepping back, although I could step back, but if I just completely retreat, again, there is a chance that they're just gonna keep moving towards me, all right? Which then changes, all right, how close they are to me, and so it changes my strategy. But also, if I just move out of the way, they're still free to keep coming after me, because again, I can't attack if I move too far out of range. I'm already, at the edge of my range when I do this defense anyway. All right, so I don't wanna just completely shift back unless I'm just already running, all right? Which you know could be something that you may need to do or might be the better option. But if I need to defend myself, I need to stop this person, I need to you know, do something, again, I'm moving my body, but my feet stay still. All right, I'm moving, they're aiming for my head, I'm moving that target as I push the hand away grab with the other arm, and then hook punch, okay? So again, 30 seconds for this. Get ready and go for it. Again, making sure, using both sides, making sure that hook punch. Again, straight line, wrist and elbow. Again, here, other side, one, two, boom. Got about 13 more seconds left. Good. If you want to kind of close distance with that hook punch, kind of step in a little bit with it. If you need to, that's also fine. And time. Goody, goody. Alrighty. So, let's see. You will need your chair now. So, if you uh, have a chair that you can use, that would be preferred. So, as you guys are getting your chair, whatever, I'm going to just talk for a bit. For a bit. No, can't talk. So, Again, what we're talking about this week is standing out, you know, kind of outside of, you know, the martial arts school and everything like that. So, again, standing out kind of in society um, today, you know, kind of tends to be mixed up with, you know, a negative connotation. Right? What that means is basically if you hear somebody standing out, all right, just because of, you know, either news or just kind of the media we consume and stuff or our personal experiences, again, kind of we think automatically, oh, that's a bad thing, okay? But it shouldn't be a bad thing, okay? Now, sometimes standing out can be a negative thing, 
but we want to stand out in a positive way. So when you guys are out of outside of here, all right, which I mean, all of you are right now, are outside your homes or wherever. Again, if you're wearing your shirt, if you're wearing, you know, your belt, which again, I have worn my belt to the store before. So, you know, you do you, but I think it's cool. But, you know, if you're walking out with these shirts on or your belt on, all right, you want to make sure that you're standing out, you know, in a positive way. And like, if, you know, someone, you know, needs help or, you know, whatever you're helping them, you know, you're opening, op opening the door for people, you know, not because someone asked you to, but just because you want to do so. Or, you know, someone's trying to reach something on a higher shelf and you are a taller person and you want to reach that, you can grab it for them. So again, just trying to stand out, you know, in the community, stand out, you know, in a positive way and be those kind of beacons of positivity, you know, wherever you go, not just when you train, not just, you know, when you're at home, again, do it, you know, when no one expects you to do it, you know, and kind of in different environments that no one really knows who you are. I'd right, be like, hey, that person's pretty cool. So now hopefully you have your chair. I'm going to go grab my chair real quick. Alrighty. So what we are going to be doing with our chair here, our chair friend, is we're going to be working on some crescent kicks. Okay. So when we do crescent kicks, okay, again, my toes are pointing up towards the ceiling and my leg is completely straight. So again, hopefully your chair is not super tall because again, we're just going to be crescent kicking over the chair just to make sure one, we get the full range of motion. All right. I want to go across my body up and over. All right. I don't want to stop it halfway and do an ax kick. All right. And for our situation now, that's going to be bad because then I hit the chair. So hands up here again, one leg is gonna go inside crescent, then that same leg's gonna come back around outside crescent. All right, back to where it started. So again, going towards my big toe, then towards my little toe, all right? We're gonna go ahead and let's do, let's go ahead and do five total sets on each leg. So one set, is inside outside that's one you're gonna do five total on each side all right and go for it in out in out keep track before i lose count all right so that's four for me again trying to keep those hands up as you go it's five Six, seven, eight, nine, last one, and ten. Good. <laughs> all righty. So now what we're going to do, all right, is we are going to sit down in our lovely chair. All right. And what we are going to do is we're going to stand up and spin crescent kick. Now, you have the option, if you would like to, uh, especially higher ranks, to do jump spin crescent kick. However, depending on your space, depending on the chair you have, and all that fun stuff, I'm not gonna force you guys to do jump spin crescent kicks if you do not want to, but you have that option. So, again, I'm here. I'm gonna turn my chair so you guys can see. Good, so I'm just gonna stand up. I'm gonna turn, whichever way I turn, that's the leg that's going to do my crescent kick. So I'm going to turn, crescent kick. I'm going to land with that leg behind me, okay? And then I would sit back down. I would do it on the other side. So from here, again, same thing. You're going a total of 10 kicks, five on each side, all right? And go for it. Boom. Boom. There he is. Back down. Boom. This is good for when movie theaters come back in style, you know? You're like, you are too close to me. All right, or they just spill their popcorn, or they're being too loud, you know, all those things that happen in movie theaters. All right, and good. That's five for me on one side. I got one more side to go. Boom. 
that one hurt a little bit. And stand up. Stand up. Good. I think that was three. Four. Good. Last one. And a ten. Alrighty. We can put our chair away. We got one more fancy thing to do before we do some sparring stuff. So, so tornado kick. All right, that's what we're going to be working on right now. A tornado kick basically is a jump, spin, inside pressing kick. All right, but it's a lot easier than a lot of other jump spin kicks because I technically still have one leg on the ground at all times rather than both feet coming off. I know, right? Just a waste of popcorn. All right, so what I'm going to show you, again, this one you're going to use your favorite side. We're just going to go ahead and get three kicks, okay? So I'm going to show you first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spin towards my back leg, all right? Once I'm back facing front, all right, so for me facing the camera, I'm bringing that knee up like I'm about to do a front kick or I just did a spinning knee strike, all right? From there, once I'm at that position, boom, I'm hop switching, if I can get my balance here, I'm gonna hop switch inside crescent. So I'm gonna switch inside crescent. All right, that's about as good as I can do a slip. So I'm here, I turn, 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 hop, switch, okay? So it's just this kick, all right? So a little bit faster, I'm here, Good. And then I let the momentum kind of carry me and I do a little extra spin to make it fancy. So I'm here. Oh. And I turn back around. Now, if you want to work on height, all right, if you feel like that's uh, too easy or again, you have kind of that pretty well down, then again, work on bringing this knee up higher. The higher this knee goes, then the higher the kick goes. Yeah. <laughs> See, Mrs. Cat didn't need a couch, or didn't need a chair. She just used her couch. All right. So we're going to get three total kicks on our favorite side and go for it. I'm just going to kind of put a timer here just so I kind of know roughly when to stop. So again, if this is something that's uh, tricky for you, again, want to make sure that again you're just working on the small steps all right and even when you work on the small steps it can seem a lot harder than it is because it's just not natural it's like i'm doing a spin and then a knee strike all right doing that by itself might be a little tricky but again it all works together with the flow all righty boom 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 all right don't hurt yourself mrs cat all right from here now working on some sparring stuff before uh, we finish out with a workout, all that fun stuff. So, sparring, okay? When I move, okay, I want, well, I guess you need to see my feet. Ugh. All right, so when I move in sparring, all right, I wanna make sure that I'm moving the correct foot first. If I'm moving forward, okay, I want to move my back foot first, okay? The reason is because I bring my feet closer, then I'm able to, you know, have a little bit farther reach on slide kicks because, again, this foot doesn't have to slide as far. Again, if it's all the way back here, again, I'm just bringing it back to where my front foot already was. If I step and slide, well, now I'm a lot closer. I know, I'm cutting off my head, sorry guys. So, when I'm moving forward, back foot first, then my front foot moves. And it's the opposite when I go backwards. So again, my front foot moves back. That is mainly because I wanna make sure I'm still in a good stance. If I move forward, all right, and I move my front foot, all right, again, just by the nature of it, again, I'm elongating my stance, 
All right, and I put more weight here. So I can't really kick with this leg. All right, if I move my back foot first, well, again, I'm kind of a little bit off balance. So again, back foot to move forward, front foot to move back. So again, just kind of do that a couple times for me, guys. Uh, I'm not going to put a timer. Just kind of go at your own pace. Just kind of go work on going forward and back. Forward and backward. Favorite side only. Good, good, good. Awesome. Good. And relax. So that was us moving forward and back. Okay. Now when I move side to side, it's kind of, let's see here. Yeah. If I move forward towards my side, or towards my chest, I guess I should say. All right, I'm using my front foot, all right, to move, and my back foot follows. Again, I don't want to use my back foot, because if I use my back foot, then I'm opening myself up, all right, especially for younger kids. You know, they might move this back foot, and then eventually they're just falling like this now, all right, because they don't know how to readjust, or they adjusted too far, and now they're in that stance. So again, my front foot moves over, then my back foot. I'm not taking large steps. If I take large steps, that's how I get into a bad stance or I get off balance to where I can't really kick. If I'm moving towards my back, again, my back foot moves. Because same thing, if I move my front foot, oh no, I open myself up. So I'm here, back foot, front foot. And then again, front foot, back foot. Back foot, front foot. Red fish, blue fish. All right, so again, on your own, let's say, 40 se or let's go 30 seconds. Again, just kind of working on that. So again, working side to side. Good to go. All right, again, moving about. Again, still trying to keep completely sideways as best you can. Hands up and guard. Again, front foot going forward back foot going backward and time all right now last couple things we're going to talk about is how to engage and how to disengage so when i'm engaging when i spar all right again i don't really want to engage with my hands all right as the first option because again if i'm kind of about a square away and i'm here and i start with my hands Again, I'm opening myself up. Pretty much no matter what move I try to do, again, I need to get close. Okay? So that's why my front leg is primarily the first move of your combos because, again, it's a really good uh, starting technique that, again, I can kick and then use that to kind of scoop closer and close off distance. So front leg kicks. Any front leg kick can be a good engaging move. And a slide kick can be a good engaging move. So again, a slide kick, again, I lift, then I push off and I move. A hop kick is not a very good uh, engaging move, all right? Because again, as soon as I move this back leg, they're already kind of knowing what I'm about to do and they kind of move farther away. Again, what we were talking about before with this back foot, again, I close the distance, I close the distance, then I would slide, okay? I don't want to just go, boom, right out the gate, unless they're running, running, moving away from me. If they're moving away from me, then I can take that risk because again, you know, they're not focusing so much on me as they are moving away. But if they're standing completely still, this becomes a lot more obvious, all right? So, gauging, disengaging. Again, I can do fadeaway kicks. So I can kind of slide back, kick. I can hand technique, disengage. Jump kicks are also good disengaging moves. Because I can go here, boom, and kind of jump back. Not really trying to hit them with the technique, but if they do kind of charge after me, well, then they get us kicked to the stomach or the ribs. So 
again, thinking about what moves you like to do with your front leg to engage, all right? Any slide kicks, disengaging. Again, I'm real close up here, all right? I might bring my leg up and kind of push them away and then get out of there. I might throw hand techniques, okay? Just depends on the situation, depends on what you're more comfortable with. All right, so last but not least, guys, all right? We're gonna finish up here with a pyramid, all right? So we're gonna go to um, level six. All right, I'm gonna set the timer for two minutes, all right? And so, again, in that two minutes, you're just trying to go up as high as you can, up to level six, push up, sit up, squat. If you don't finish in two minutes, that's okay. You can finish after this class ends or try again next time. Hopefully you finish after class though, hopefully. All right, get ready, get set, and go. All right, the timer has started. Again, not necessarily trying to go super fast, just trying to make sure doing the moves correctly. Good. One, two, and then I go. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, about halfway there, guys, level wise. Good, almost halfway there, time wise. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go back to my squats. One, two, three, four. Level five. One minute to go. One, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Last level, 30 seconds to go. strong good finish strong four five six 14 seconds left one two five and six three two one time Whew. all right hopefully you guys are nice and sweaty now <laughs> Alrighty, from there, we're going to put our hands in the virtual middle. Alrighty. And then on three, we're going to yell, stand out. Alright. One, two, three, stand out. Alright, thank you guys for joining us today. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.